Hi, and welcome to Access Chat. We're delighted to have Valerie and Sarah Stroll with us today. Sarah has a, her own TV show, a cookery program uh, called Sarah's Great Day. It's really exciting to have you with us. Been really pleased to have you uh, joining us on Twitter, and and now to have you with us in person. It's absolutely fantastic. So, can you explain a little bit about your show and, and what you're doing and all of the good work that you're you're putting out there? Um, yeah, um, it's called Sarah's Great Day. It's after mm -hmm. Sarah. Yeah. And what we do is we have our own YouTube channel called Sarah's Great Day, also. And we, um, when we make cooking shows, we basically try to incorporate therapies, but very on a very, very low level. It's mostly, you know, we're just having a good time in the kitchen. We're making yeah. foods that we both love. Um, sometimes we have guests. Yeah. Yeah. Or mm -hmm. we have Michael. Yeah. Which we, Michael Daly. Michael Daly, who we love. Mm -hmm. Sarah's friend. And um, we just... You know, we just have a great time and really kind of try to put a, a just a very uh, comfortable um, spin, I guess, or whatever, on disabilities. It's just not a big deal, you know. And and uh, it's a great show. I've watched a couple. Thank you. Um, Thank you. You're our first guest with Down syndrome. It's a great honor to have you here. So, um, and it's great to see what you're doing. So. Well, thank welcome, you. Welcome. Um, Deborah. I know this is obviously close to home for you, so you're going to have plenty of questions. So I'm going to hand over and, and let you ask your, your first one. Well, thank you, Neil. And welcome, Sarah and Valerie. We really are excited to have you here. Thank you. Well, thank, thank you. you. Uh, uh, as uh, many people know, I also have a daughter with Down syndrome, and her name is Sarah also. She spells it a little differently from you, and I think our families in some ways um, have a lot in common, worked really yep. hard to um, create the advocacy and make sure that um, everybody has a voice and that everybody can be included. So we were so excited to learn about your cooking show and all of the different things that you're doing. So I would like to know more about the cooking show. I mean, how many episodes have you done? Uh, do you have sponsors? Are you looking for sponsors? We'd really like to know more about your cooking show and, and the plans for your cooking show, too. Well, we are actually putting out our 42nd episode this week. Yeah. Um, and um, we do have sponsors for the show. We have two local sponsors um, that are in the disability arena. Um, but yeah, we are always looking for more sponsors. We, we you know, it's, it's kind of a catch-22 situation is that in order to be big enough and have enough followers to get a larger sponsor like a craft or a KitchenAid or a GE appliance or something like that, you have to have the followers, but to get the followers, you need someone like a GE, you know, KitchenAid, you know, OXO or something like that. And so it's it's just kind of a game, you know, you got to try to figure it out and, and put things out there that people like. And mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. And, you know, we are, a, you know, we're a small operation. We, uh, our production crew is made up of high school students that uh, with and without disabilities. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, we have school schedules, we have illness, you know, mm -hmm. um, it's just, it's, you know, it would be really nice to have a professional uh, crew that, you know, you could always say uh, every Tuesday we're going to shoot and stuff like that. And that's what being in that bigger sponsorship area would help us with. But I also love our kids, don't you? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we love our kid, kid crew. I think it's great that it's that it's 
um, done by the kids anyway. I think it's it's one of the one of the really nice things. It, it, yeah. Um, we're we're certainly homespun because we can totally relate to um, doing everything ourselves. Um, it's it's a string and glue job here. Everything's held together with little bits of string and little bits of glue yep. as we try and yep. do it as our best to look professional. Um, right, right. But but yes, it, it's very much a, a case of of trying to get that momentum and and hopefully you know by uh, doing things like Access Chat will help you gather greater momentum. So, so I've got a question for you, Sarah. Um, yeah, sure. What, what's your favorite thing about doing your show? Um, well, um, the show is fun. Yeah, it is fun. Uh -huh. Yeah. What else do you like to do, Sarah? Um, what, what do you like, um, on um, the show? What's your favorite thing about it? Um, uh, to um <sighs> you like it when Mike when your friends are on um Dave Hall um Mo Tessa Keen and Rebecca Heard yeah which I think she loves it when her friends are on the show yeah Sarah you like cooking certain foods over other foods, like maybe sweets and desserts, or? Um, well, happily, I made bounties. Yeah. You like sweets, don't you? Yeah. We all do. That's why I'm I do, too. <laughs> she loves, um, you love Parmesan chicken, right? Yeah. But, you know, that's a little bit harder to make. So she, what she really enjoys is, like, we made blueberry frozen yogurt and, you know, um, just lots of sweets we have made. And those are always a lot of fun, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah. So the, I would say that, you know, you like to see the smiles of your friends when they are eating those brownies. Yeah. She really like it. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's, I think it's um, so important, which I think like blueberry yogurt was like 38 or 39 um, episode. Uh, blueberry, frozen blueberry lemon yogurt. And she did it with her really good friends from Best Buddies. And, and it's just touching. It's just heartwarming. And uh, when you watch it, it just kind of makes you feel good inside. You know, the world's okay. It's yeah. it's a good world. I I watched that episode, so um, mm -hmm. I I thought it was great, and so you do quite a bit of stuff with Best Buddies. But can can you tell us a bit about Best Buddies because uh, it's not something that we're familiar with in in the UK. It's obviously something that's American. I, it you know what it is actually global. Um, it was started by Anthony Shriver um, okay. from the Kennedy family, Anthony yeah. Kennedy Shriver. Uh, mm -hmm. It's 25 years old, but we do. We have Canadian affiliates. We have Egyptian, uh, some South America um, groups. But what it does is it takes typical kids, so kids without intellectual disabilities, and pairs them up with kids that do have disabilities and for example, in our school, a quarter of the students in our school are in this program. And so Sarah has like 17, 18 buddies. So, and you know, not all of them become really close friends with that large of a group, but she has made real friendships and, you know, goes to small group at church with them now. and. There are some weekends where we have to say no. She just can't do, you know, she can't be in two places at one time. And mm -hmm. she, because she has so many things that she can do, so many good friends. Mm -hmm. uh, Valerie, can you describe us some of the projects that best, that are happening in Indiana that with, with Best Buddies? Oh, yeah. Like, um, where did you go Saturday? 
Um, to the Mini Amazon. You went to the bowling. Oh yeah. Sorry, the it was Sunday. Bowling. She. Hi. Yeah, she. They went bowling. They took uh, three busloads of kids bowling. <laughs> yep. And um, we. Uh, what are some other things that we do? We have meetings uh, every uh, the first Tuesday of every month. Um, um, what are some of the other things you did? You decorated pumpkins. I can... We had a fire pit at our house mm-hmm. um, on Halloween night. Um, oh my gosh, we have Best Buddy Prom. We have Best Buddy Friendship Dance. That was a couple weekends ago. Um, it's, you know, we have uh, Best Buddies uh, goes down to a, a, a festival that we have every fall in Zionsville. It's kind of a sleep little town outside of Indianapolis and uh, there's a carnival over uh, Labor Day weekend the kids all go to that um, it, it's mm-hmm. it's awesome you know yeah uh, uh, I would like you know if, if you if you go back to your first show and then you know and if you look back you know, to all the developments that are happening until today uh, what changes did you see you see that are happening in in the show itself you know in in your interactions uh, be, you know, between you, Sarah, and, and the buddies? You know, I think um, I'm watching Sarah mature, uh, which is, is natural. She's 16, and she is, you know, maturing. <laughs> <laughs> um, I just, I, I love to see her independence, um, her ability to, to speak on camera, um, just the poise that it takes. Um, when we go to just functions in our community, her ability to look at adults in the eye and shake their hand and say, it's a pleasure to meet you. Um, I mean, you all know it's hard to be on camera. And literally, she can be having the worst day and that camera mm-hmm. goes on and she can just put it, she can get it together, you know? And that's a very unique skill set and that's going to help her in the future and I think you know sometimes I wish we could go back to the beginning where all we did was take a camcorder and put it on a little tripod and tape it you know now we have sound and multiple cameras and um, lighting and you know it's just it's crazy but but it's 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 really it's a very exciting process to be part of would you say? Uh, um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's crazy. Yeah. Our kitchen gets crazy. <laughs> Doesn't it? I, yeah. I, I think it's amazing that you, you're putting out really nice quality videos and quite envious, really, uh, of, the, of the quality of the video. Thank you. Um, Thank you. That makes ours, us feel good. Yeah. Ours, ours is pretty flaky. It's dependent on the internet connection. Yeah. Oh, and media is crazy. It just media is crazy. And it's, um, it's, you know, we like to say, hurry up and wait. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But you, so, you, 41 episodes is a lot. That's, that's, that's a, a significant output. So yeah, well done. And I Thank see you. You, 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 you made dog biscuits for your last show. Um, <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> you need for... to do a few, Neil. <laughs> Pardon? You need to do a few. Uh, well, a few, a few dog biscuits. Yeah. <laughs> oh no, I've got, I've got my, my packet of bribes here for yeah. the dog under the desk. <laughs> <laughs> Show us your dog, Neil. Oh, he's disappeared. He's actually got bone. Come here. <laughs> this will probably be the highest rated access oh. chat because the dog will be shown. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's the other crazy part about media, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. Okay. So what people will like. So, Aww. Right. This is Bon Bon. Hi, Bon Bon. Yeah. Hi, Bon Bon. Uh, we need to find, you know, you, you need to have a dedicated camera just for him. So we That's need to start right. five yeah. on the stream. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Are you going to ask the 
That's right. That's right. <laughs> Oh. He's already, he's all, he's no, as you can see, uh, Valerie, Bombo is very comfortable with the camera. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's also very comfortable with, uh, well, he's very comfortable because he's chubby, so he's well padded. <laughs> he likes his food. Mm. So, um, excuse me. So we're, we're going back to the, the, the best buddies thing. You, you were talking about how um, the Best Buddies is, is active in the school, but before we started the recording, you also said that you're very deeply so, involved with Best Buddies as well. Uh, yes, um, I am um, on the board here in uh, Indiana, and so it, it really it really means a lot to me uh, because I believe it changes culture. Um, at a very pivotal age in children. So they can start as early as elementary school. There's just a few chapters in elementary, but some in middle school and then high school and college. And now they've started a program for adults called the Champions Program. But if you can take a child, you know, a 10, 11, 12 through 18 year old, you know, young person, and change the way they see people with disabilities, then you have, you know, you have changed culture at the root. And these kids do not care what you look like, what color your skin is, uh, if you have a disability, if you don't, and the way you talk. And so it's a, it's a beautiful sight to see. And then what they do is they change communities and they change the way employers think about people for jobs. If I'm, if I grew up with that, I'm not really going to have a big, a big issue with someone with down syndrome working in my, in my business. And I, because you realize it's not a big deal. You know, absolutely. Yeah. So I'm a big fan. Yeah, no, they sound like a great organization. Certainly in the UK, there are a couple of, of mainstream, uh, multi big stores. So mainly uh, a, a good one that that I recognize is, is a, co a company called B&Q. Uh, they're a hardware store, big, mm -hmm. big hardware store. And they employ a lot of people with Down syndrome. And it's one of the, the, the really noticeable things about uh, the the store and one one that I think gets a lot of positive reactions because actually you know, there's no reason why um, people should be excluded from work. You know, people no. are perfectly capable of working. Um, you know, we want to encourage people to have careers and, and, and a yep. good job and a good life. And and yes, you're right. It starts young. The, uh, yeah. the younger we, we, we start mm -hmm. getting everyone you know, uh, understanding and accepting the differences in diversity with people, yep. uh, the, the more accepting they are as they get older and go into the workplace. Yeah. And I think, you know, that's what we're trying to do with Sarah's Great Day. And when people see Sarah, you know, we're pretty active in the community is, you know, I remember when I found out that Sarah had Down syndrome, we didn't know beforehand, I had a lot of misconceptions. And that is a terrible thing to have. And so when, so then, you know, all of a sudden this baby, you know, wasn't doing all these things that they said, <laughs> isn't that sweet, yeah. um, was going to happen. And I thought, you know, yeah. I am yeah. going to do everything in my power for the rest of my life to make sure that nobody is afraid of this. Um, because it's, it's not true. It's a, it's a lie. And, uh, and I, and I see us making great strides. Um, you know, young parents, they really, truly, you know, from what I see on, you know, Facebook and Twitter and Instagram, they, they really don't care um, if their child has a disability. They want to make sure they're cared for and medically cared for and they have a meaningful life. But I don't see them you know, getting upset about it. And it's just, it's, it's real incredible to, to watch it change just from when she was born um, 16 years ago. And just the changes since Sarah's show has started in two years. You know, now we have people starting coffee companies and breweries and 
it's like all these parents have become entrepreneurs and they're just taking Deborah, you and Sarah. You're just, it's just like, okay, what are my child's talents? Let's go. You know, what are my talents? What are your talents? And we're going to take off and, and we're going to go on this great ride that changes the world. And it's uh, exciting and exhilarating. And, um, and really, you know, when you think about how all great societies start, they start with family business, you know, and, and so you're doing what people used to do, which was start a business with your family and, and watch it grow. And I know you know that, Deborah. We, we, I, I agree that um, entrepreneurial, entrepreneurs, it's a very, very big part of this topic. And yeah. I, I do want to say that one thing that with my Sarah, when my Sarah was growing up and um, she had, it was very hard to understand her sometimes. Yeah. She would people would not always understand what Sarah was saying yep. and she would be so patient um, repeating herself over and over again and one of the things that you know we were trying to get her speech therapy but the reality was the speech therapist had way too many children and did not really yep. have time or the funding to really give her the speech therapist one-on-one that she needed but the thing that ha helped my Sarah with her communication skills more than anything else was when she joined theater arts and she had to go on stage and she had to learn to really say her words more clearly so the audience could understand and project and do all those things. She became a very good communicator. And um, she's like, your, your Sarah reminds me of my Sarah because she's very social. And when she meets people, she sticks her hands out. She introduces herself. So communications is a very, very important yeah and skill for for everyone but certainly for people with down syndrome so it's very interesting how the cooking show ha has really helped sarah blossom in probably unexpected ways yep. not to mention the power of advocacy and leadership that we've seen from it as well so i, I think that's interesting but entrepreneurship for families that have a family member with a per with disabilities or uh, entrepreneurship for people with disabilities i think is a very important part of um the conversation of disability inclusion Absolutely. And it, it is hot right now. I mean, it just, it just really is. I love to watch it. You know, when Sarah and I did our first show, March 3rd, 2013, and we did five shows, which um, you guys know with media and producers and stuff, sometimes they take those shows. <laughs> so those shows are gone um, and we don't have access to them. Uh, which is part of the reason I started my own production company. So I didn't have to deal with that again. Um, but in 2013, Sarah's Great Day was a big deal. You know, we were on the front page of the paper and our local paper and, um, you know, asked to be on the morning um, talk shows in Indianapolis. And, mm -hmm. and now I'll be honest with you. I mean, there's a lot of noise out there. It isn't... Um, there's lots of people doing incredible things that have disabilities and Sarah is just one part of that. But I think she was part of the catalyst that, you know, that started that whole movement of entrepreneurial skills and, um, you know, thinking outside of the box as parents and not just saying, okay, this is, you know, this is what they say you're supposed to do now. And so do it. No, you know, and, and now it's just, you know, the barn doors open. Let's go. You know, I agree. I agree. We've, we've actually featured quite a lot about entrepreneurialism for people with disabilities yep. uh, as part of access chat. Uh, and, and some of it's born out of necessity um, because people are unable yeah. to find jobs through normal means. Um, but, but equally, I think that there is a societal shift going on anyway. Uh, people yep. are not working for, for a lifetime for one big company. Yep. They're going out, they're, they're starting stuff for themselves. 
the the way that we're connected now internationally um, by the internet means that you can work with people like we are doing here, sat across right. you know three different continents. Yeah, which is very exciting. Oh yeah, it's fantastic. Sarah can tell she has world history. She'll go back to world history at school, and she can tell Mr. Magoni that she spoke with someone from Scotland and England and Virginia. Mm -hmm. Ireland. That, Ireland. Ireland. Sorry about that, Antonio. <laughs> hey, did you see Antonio? Did you see our episode from the um, Bally Malou Cookery School? No. It's uh, called um, Stripey Kittens. You have to watch it. But we had a chef from the United States who trained at Ballymaloo Cookery in Cork, I Ireland. Yes, no, no, that's yeah. Ballymaloo is just no, it's just very, it's close to, to it's very close to Cork. Yeah. And Cork, yeah, Cork, so. Cork, Cork is known as the food capital of Ireland. Yep. Started the food to table movement, I believe. Yes, just just a few a few minutes from my house, we have the the most famous market in Cork. Yep. So it's a, where they have the fresh products. It's a very uh, it's a, it's a, a well known place. It receives um, hundreds of visits every day. People want to see what is. Oh uh, yeah. It's a very interesting yeah. place, and food is in. Uh, over the last couple of years, I have to say there's a quite a good a number of changes in, in the Cork food scene. We have a lot of diversity. Of a lot of uh, uh, startups have started in the food business, so we see a lot of innovation in relation to food and well-being. So it's it's uh, it's very yeah. interesting. Yeah, it, it it is a wonderful story how they how they did that. So. But that's a great episode. You'll have to watch that, Antonio. Okay, I will. Are you in the in in the, in the way how you plan your programs and you you choose your agenda in terms about what you are going to do next? How how you do that is you know, let's say Sarah or tells you I would like to do this, or you realize okay maybe this should be fun. Let's try it. So how how is that working for you too? Um. You know what we do is we kind of look for what is kind of popular um, and, and kind of what the season is. We Our production is a little bit sketchy sometimes, so we don't always get to tie everything in with the time of the year. But what we are looking for is simple recipes that really truly can be done uh, by children or by elderly or anybody who has limited fine motor skills and that incorporates, somebody is tired here, uh, and that incorporates, um, you know, fine motor skills, you know, like chopping or, um, you know, piecing something together so you have that hand-eye coordination or something like that we're very very tricky and you know we're doing fun therapy on the show and most people don't even know it so that's what we do if you know if we have a guest on um if they're really good cooks we have them bring their favorite recipe but um you know it's stuff that i know sarah would like i know the kids would like um you know who doesn't like blueberry lemon frozen yogurt you know in the summer, but the bumper blueberry crop in Indiana. So, yeah. 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 So, so Valerie and Sarah, what what are your hopes for the for the show? I mean, I, I would love to see it get you know some syndication syndication on like the Oprah Winfrey Network or the Cooking Channel or something like that. I mean. What are your hopes and dreams for the cooking show? What are yours, um, Sarah? We'll ask Sarah first. Okay. okay. What are your hopes and dreams for the cooking show? Well, um, I work so hard. You do work hard. Mm -hmm. And then um, I try to help. Mm -hmm. My mom. And she helps me a lot. Yes, she does. Do you want to keep doing Sarah's Great Day? 
Um, uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, we have, I don't, I hope we're still, are we still connected? We are. Because Antonio is circling. Okay. Um, you know, I think we are expanding. We're kind of going into some more lifestyle type shows. Um, so starting in January, Sarah is going to start working with a personal trainer. Uh, she loves to box. Uh, this is again, you know, Neil, where technology just really helps because you've got the Wii game and Sarah has become an expert boxer. <laughs> yeah. So she's going to do things like boxing and we're really going to work on um, really, you know, getting her muscle strength, uh, eating healthy. We're bringing in, in some other parties uh, in the state of Indiana that are interested in health. Um but the cooking show is always going to be the anchor of it. We will always do cooking shows. Um, I think the other thing is we are branching out into some other areas. We are doing production for other, yes. <laughs> um, we are doing um, production for other companies. And um we also did a series called Conversations where we discuss with a family, my husband and I, um, where we we discuss um, a family that lost a child with special needs and then adopted a child with special needs. And, and it's just a great story, again, telling people you're going to be okay. Um, we're doing some documentaries now where I'm actually producing and, and not uh, – shooting or anything, but I'm producing uh, to tell these great stories about people with disabilities. You know, um, we've got two in the works right now. One is about a woman who was not disabled, became disabled, received a pill one day, is no longer disabled, but she only has a matter of time to tell her story because she will, she has early onset Parkinson's. And so she has this little time to say, folks, this is what it's like to be disabled. We can't do this anymore. This is wrong. You know, you're on the sidelines. And it's just it, it's just a great story. And then the, the other story is there's some, I've gotten very close to a lot of young people with special needs in, in my area. And so I've got a young woman with cerebral palsy who is a phenomenal news anchor person and trying to find her work. And... Um, I've got a young man, um, and I won't use his name just because I don't know if I can, but um, he is a, a quad with uh, cerebral palsy, but he has a degree. And how do we employ people that have needs in the workplace like that? And so this is a, I don't know the answer to this, but it's the question, it's got to go out there. We have to start talking about it and how technology can make that happen. And so getting organizations and businesses here in Indianapolis saying, okay, we, we've got to address this. We don't know how yet, but we have to address it. Well, hopefully people like myself can help with some of that because my day job is providing assistive yep. tech. So, um, yeah, you know I would, I would love that. Out there. But it's, it's, you know, it's kind of the next evolution of, I think, of where we are in disabilities is, you know, we're making a lot of progress, but there is this group of people that are truly being left behind. And it's, and, and businesses do not know how to employ a quadriplegic. They don't. No. And you can talk till you're blue in the face and they don't know how to do that. So how do we use technology to get them into the workplace? And um, um, I think it, we've got to have this conversation. It's, it's certainly tricky, but you know, we support people that are quite uh, in yeah, some yeah. of the businesses that, that I provide services to. So it's, it's yep. not impossible. Obviously, you know, there, there are significant adjustments that need to be made um, and you need support work and you need technology in spades to make it feasible, but it's all doable. Uh, yep. and, and, and we have 
people in our legislature in in the House of Lords that are quadriplegic as well that that also you know they're there they're part of our yep. of our governance of our country um, so it's not like the you know people cannot contribute there's absolutely yep. a, a valid contribution for everyone to make in society yep. um, but yes you need you, know, you, need, Neil, you need the know-how you need to be able uh, to uh, let, let me inter interrupt Valerie yes. I see, so I see, so what you say is how do we explain this to business? How they how can we make them understand that that's possible to to do? Probably that's the the thing that is missing a bit, no? It yeah, I really I I see it on the business end as the as the problem. I am a huge capitalist, you know, pro business. I'm you know, I'm so I'm not trying to pick on anybody here. But you know, I've met with I've met with companies before about people that have limited mobility, um, and I'm just going. You know, I tell them. You know, when they get back to me and say no, <laughs> I just tell them I'm like, well, you know, I mean, I'm going to be calling you again, and it's this, you know, this slow conversation that you just have to keep feeding them to to get them on board um things don't change yeah. overnight do they no no you have, you have to have a great deal of persistence to, to to make that kind of change and that's something that we see in all of our all of our guests uh, people yeah. are very single-minded they may be open-minded but they're also very single-minded yeah it's it's a recurring thing you know you, you you've got deep focus and 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 you know that's why we admire what you're doing because you're oh, obviously very you. deeply focused on, on on making a change for the better. And you know, Neil, this is what I think from just talking with businesses and organizations. I believe they want to do it. I I truly do. They they believe it needs to happen, and they just don't know how. And so that's where we have to be that bridge we of of bringing them together and and. Um, and um, we just have to do that. I mean, I, I just, you know, I just, I can't imagine not being or being told that you can't work and you want to work. You know, that's just, that's a basic desire and need. Absolutely, Deborah. Do you have any final questions before we wrap up? Well, uh, the the uh, more of a comment. Um, okay. Obviously, obviously, I agree with everything you're saying, Valerie, and that's the work that my Sarah and I have, you know, taken on. Yeah. Uh, we we need many voices, and we need to make sure that um, we. I, I think media, as you know, uh, I I think is a very very important part yeah. of it. That's why we focus um, so much on social media, but we need to really tell the stories. We need to document the stories. There are many success stories that have already happened, but the problem is a lot of employers don't know about those stories. Yep. And yep. so they, many of them are, like you said, they're more than happy to do it, but often um, the community of people with disabilities are accidentally sending the wrong message to the employers, yep. um, using the wrong language, saying carve up your business, your work. And so the, we all have to get on the same page and definitely make sure that not only do we help these employers be successful, but then we reward those employers by families like ours actually deciding I'm not doing business with any company that doesn't support people with disabilities. So if I know that Walgreens in the United yep. States employs people with intellectual disabilities, I as a family of four will make sure that Walgreens is the pharmacy that I select to use. Yep. And I actually changed mm -hmm. my buying from another company that competes with Walgreens that did not include people with disabilities yep. in the workforce. But then you, that's not enough. I have to yeah. write, and I did, a letter to the CEO of Walgreens telling him why I'm changing. And I wrote a letter to the other CEO. I won't mention the company and told them why I was leaving 
his, um, mm. you know, his, his brand when I had been a loyal customer for 25 years. Yep. And, yep. Um, and then we have to talk about it on social media. So we, as the community of people with disabilities, we also have to do our part and rewarding the brands that are actually the effort. And I'll give Atos a um, shout out here. Atos is, is, has been very supportive of Antonio and Neil as we do Access Chat. And they are employers of people with disabilities and yeah. they, they, you know, accommodate employees, uh, you know, and they're not perfect like any other corporation yeah. isn't perfect, but they are trying. And so we need to applaud and reward the corporations that are actually yep. trying to do this and teach them along the way. So it's a multi-dimensional problem solution and um, and part of it is having families like yours tell us that we know that Sarah can be a very successful cooking program and we need to get that out and have everybody yeah. see it and see the yeah. gifts that Sarah brings to the table. She's obviously a very poised, beautiful young woman that has a lot of talents. So we are, Ooh, we are really, we're really... She's blushing. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Deborah, and... Um, you you are so right. We we have to um, as a community, we're very strong. I mean, just in the United States, close to twenty five percent, you know, disabled. So we have to support companies that support our loved ones, and we have to become that same strong voice that other groups do. And we just have to. Thank you so much. We're at the end of our half hour now. It's, uh, it's been a really brilliant chat. Uh, so I'd like to, to um, look forward to our chat on Twitter tomorrow night. Yes, can't wait. All right, so thank you and, and goodbye, Valerie and Sarah. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.